much, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. Good morning to everyone and welcome to the subcommittee hearing. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, again for holding this hearing and thank you uh, to our witnesses uh, for your testimony on this very important matter. I'm eager to hear each of your perspectives. I also want to thank uh, Congressman Anthony uh, Gonzalez for his tireless bipartisan effort to give student athletes the opportunity to receive compensation for their name, image, and likeness, or NIL. It's not too often a Florida Gator and a Ohio State Buckeye can come together in the name of amateur sports. <laughs> but I'm glad to be working with him on this and remain very, very hopeful we can get bipartisan legislation to the end zone of this Congress. Now, of course, uh, we have other sports besides football that we're going to uh, discuss. Uh, Madam Chair, I also like to ask unanimous consent that a statement from, uh, again, Congressman Anthony Gonzalez be entered into the record. And I have that right here, Madam Chair. Without objection. Thank you. Uh, to that end, I think we need to have uh, realistic uh, expectations for what our committee should focus on when legislating to allow collegiate uh, athletes the opportunity to capitalize on their NIL. Uh, it is the only way we can get this done for students. And I and I and we all agree, uh, Madam Chair, on the, the NIL, and, and uh, I have it in my statement, but it's so very necessary that we have preemptive uh, legislation here. Uh, currently, 30 states across the country have their own laws allowing college athletes to monetize off their NIL, including my home state of Florida. Unfortunately, this is not the first time a patchwork of state laws has caused potential confusion and crippling, uh, a crippled fair comp competition. We're currently seeing this same scenario play out with consumer privacy laws, so I'm uh, hopeful this hearing highlights the need for Congress to establish a national preemptive framework for NIL and create a true level playing field for all students and educational institutions across the nation. If Congress fails to enact legislation preventing a patchwork of state laws, we will likely see states competing with one another to create the best incentives for students to come to their schools. And, and you know that's gonna happen. Uh, again, while I know young people want to come to the great state of Florida, preferably the University of Florida, we must be fair to the hundreds of other universities and colleges across the country that may be a better fit for student athletes. We have a lot of uh, members here on both sides of the aisle represent uh, different schools and different conferences. Uh, to be clear, what I'm suggesting is not an approach decided upon the uh, NCAA and various conferences, but rather by collegiate athletes themselves. I recently received a letter from 15 collegiate athletes from the ACC uh, that emphasized this point, and I want to quote these students, if that's okay, Madam Chair. It's clear we need a federal baseline, is what they say, that re-levels the playing field, and we need one soon. The students also explain the most important factor in legislating on NIL is to protect all collegiate athletes, especially those outside the big revenue generating sports like football and basketball, uh, stating, and I quote again, Congress would do a disservice to student athletes, sports culture, and American society in general if it passes a bill that diminishes educational opportunities that leaves schools no choice but to reduce scholarships or cut programs due to budget reallocation. I couldn't agree more. Uh, Madam Chair, I ask unanimous consent that uh, I enter this particular letter from the ACC uh, College Athletes. Without objection. Thank you very much. So I think these students uh, know what they want. I really do, Madam Chair. And again, if you read, uh, I'm not going to read the names of the schools because I don't have time, but these are uh, very, very credible universities that represent the, these, and again, these athletes represent those universities. If we exceed the focus of this debate, as well as go far outside the bounds of our committee's jurisdiction, I feel we will end up hurting the college athletes and their chances of succeeding on and off the field. I also want to point out that these students didn't ask for health care mandates or guaranteed scholarships or for private rights of action. The risk of such factors will result 
in cutting the very sports programs we are working on to protect. After all, there's a difference between being a representative of a school and being a full-time employee of a school. I agree wholeheartedly with these students. College students should be able to compete and work hard to receive NIL benefits, and that's what our committee should focus on. Uh, and I really look forward to, to hearing the witnesses and getting more input. So thank you very much, Madam Chair, for giving me the opportunity. I yield back. The gentleman yields back the chair.